Shut up, you little brats. All right. Uh, how's it going, party people? Uh, welcome to Useless Agent Presents STS. I am your host, Useless Agent, and today is the 5th of February. Now, this is a Sunday show, so uh, I don't expect a lot of people to view it. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be back on our normal schedule. So tomorrow, 10 a.m. will be our normal episode. Um, I really just wanted to get some stuff uh, said today. Um, And again, I apologize for yesterday's episode. Um, I love having Chris on here, and I will never say no to her being on here. That's always my idea to put her on it. But, you know... The issue that we are having with the um, audio and the 10-second lag that you guys... um, I mean, people are literally leaving the show. And, um, you know, people are are not only just leaving the show, uh, but they're, you know, they're, they're not viewing it. And it's not Chris's fault. It's not my. It, it's not even my fault. It's completely this app and Melon app. Um, so I have heard a couple of complaints about Chris and I, um, but notice that I always leave it for the weekend shows, so they're not meant to be taken too seriously. And again, it's not our fault that the camera has a 10 second lag. I mean, I think it is about a five, maybe six second lag. And so, yeah, that can be pretty hard to watch. And so I apologize for Melon app. I don't apologize for having Chris on. Uh, That's my best friend. I'm always going to invite her. Uh, I just really wish we can figure out what the hell is wrong with the uh, lag. We double checked and it turned out that on a face chat we had no issues whatsoever so it's definitely just this app and this uh, streaming service so again i apologize for that we always try to give you a good show i do not want you guys to have to sit through 10 seconds of silence because i'm waiting for her to get the message across or for her to receive the message so it is ridiculous but It's in no way her fault or mine. So let's go ahead and get started with our daily tradition. See, look at that. I already lost a fan just for explaining this. So sorry. (sighs) So today might be the last day for Magic Melon, which has been a great, uh, it's been a great strain. And, uh, you know, it, I kind of wanted to mention this earlier uh, with (coughs) with the (coughs) excuse me with the legalization and the decriminalized uh, decriminalization of marijuana. um, Lots of people have tended to start going to the. you know, the dispensaries, and um, I can just, I just want the government to know you're definitely not putting any weed dealers out of business, okay? Because the price 
now when we talked about um not necessarily talked about but when we would discuss the the idea of marijuana's decriminalization and legalization we always said that we were totally okay with you guys taxing the shit out of it just make it legal but we did not expect a uh, a tax that was going to be added alongside the regular price of bud so now when you know you you get your average um let's say you get your average gram that costs you 20 bucks you know there really is no difference here maybe a five to ten dollar difference because there's like a 50 percent tax on it which is just fucking ridiculous if you're going to tax us 50% on our bud, that's, you know, fine, but make the initial price, you know, um, sensible. I mean, no one's saying that the weed has to be free, but uh, no one's saying it has to be free, but, you know. One second. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's crazy because we initially thought that you know the prices were going to be different. We all had our own ideas of how they were going to do this. I remember thinking it was going to come in basically a pack. Now, this was the original idea, was to put marijuana in packs like this and then just tax the shit out of it. So this would cost $20 instead of 10 Now, that would have been fine. And, you know, even if they uh, t didn't even give us this much, you know, 20 cigarettes, you know, they could have gave us 10 marijuana cigarettes for the price of uh, two packs of cigarettes and that would have made sense um but the idea that if you want a simple um eighth of marijuana that you know on the street you will get uh on the street you'll either get this kind or you will get this from the dispensary. So again, it was great, but we pay $50 for this eighth. But if you go to a dispensary, you're going to spend over $90 on this. And so that's where the disconnect happened. We thought you guys were going to We thought you guys were going to make it reasonably priced and then go ahead and tax it. But by making it $50 and then taxing on an extra $30, now it's $88 and some change for a simple eighth of marijuana that would have costed you 50 bucks on the street. So you're definitely not putting any weed dealers out of commission here because nine times out of 10, uh, it's simply cheaper to just get your regular weed from your regular guy. And my guy is literally across the street, so it is never a problem. I can literally talk to him with a, one of those, the way we used to talk with the cans on a string. I could order it like that if I wanted to. So they definitely didn't, you know, make it any easier for us. I mean... You know, yeah, it's great. I can go to a dispensary, but who wants to pay a hundred dollars for an eighth? You know, it's eighty dollars for a quarter, and that's for really good weed. And actually, what it did was it made our street weed actually go cheaper. So instead of paying what used to be fifty dollars an eighth, now you pay forty. And what used to be $40 an eighth for the regular, mid-grade, nothing special, uh, now that's gone down to 20 an eighth or 25 an eighth. So, again, you did nothing but help us out, really. Um, 
And if that was their way of winning the war on drugs, wow, that was a really stupid move because it didn't change anything. And they've done this before when they started with the cigarettes and they thought, oh, well, if we tax the cigarettes up to more than $10 a pack, it encourages people to stop buying cigarettes. No, it stops us from buying other shit. You know, it didn't stop us from buying our smokes. It just stopped us from paying for the other shit that you wanted us to spend our money on to help the economy. So now instead of helping the economy and buying, I don't know, let's say a basketball or something. Um, but you're at the store and the cigarettes just cost you like 15 bucks. Well, now you're going to say, fuck the basketball. I don't need the basketball. I'll just take my cigarettes. So David tell had said it the best. You know, you're not encouraging us to stop smoking. You're not encouraging us to stop buying cigarettes. You're just encouraging, uh, encouraging us to stop buying everything else. Now, um, I always like to go with two different topics uh, per episode. So I have a lot I wanted to talk about when it comes to uh, Internet, semantics, the way people are. So uh, if I can just indulge you for a moment, I just want to mention that, you know, semantics are a strange concept in its essence, because in its essence, it just means words. That's it. Nothing special. Now, if I were to say don't and you say do not, the difference is simple semantics. It's just a matter of one simple apostrophe and nothing more. But the effect of that particular syntax can be used and can change the context of a sentence and completely hide something nefarious in what seems to be the most innocent of conversations or statements. Now, semantics are what make us feel stupid or smart, clever, or completely fooled by the context, manner, or even the cadence in which someone says something that can change your entire opinion in a matter of seconds. So I've always had this fond appreciation for, for vocabulary, and I believe it's the words that we choose that can change or alter the very road that we take in life. Now, the, the downside of this was, to me, the Internet. And... What happened to me, in my eyes, the internet has given a whole new meaning to the word friend, okay? Now, this is no longer a matter of simple semantics because I have had friends on Facebook that in real life I ran into and completely ignored me at the mall. So it, why the number of friends on your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever your social media page is, why the number of friends on that little ticker is so important to people, I just will never understand it. Because personally, I always take quality over quantity. I'd rather have one good friend than a thousand acquaintances. And, you know, um, the problem, again, is I take, you know, the Internet... Um, seems like the online attitudes, platitudes, anonymity has bled through the screen and into the brains of these morons. And then delusions of grandeur becomes more prevalent. And the overall confidence level of this person changes. The problem is that when you're in the real world, you are no longer anonymous. And you are very tangible. Now, the majority of people jump to the idea of fat shaming, ageism, all sorts of different prejudices. But once it's their tribe that's being put in the mud, suddenly it becomes a racist or prejudice issue. And I just hate, I hate everyone equally and never had much of an ethnicity to, to, to cling on to. 
So race never mattered to me. Character was all you needed to be cool with me. As long as you were cool, that was it. That was all you had to be. You were cool. And that was, but that was 20 years ago. Since then, the internet has taken over almost every facet of life from our food shopping to retail and entertainment. But of course, that was not enough. Being your go to shopping center for everything was just the tip of the iceberg, just the start. Eventually, it would begin to change people all together. I thought it was originally just the younger generations that were so sucked into this world of ignorance and stupidity and naivety. But when I speak to people, you know, they're 40 year olds, you know, I noticed that the average 40 year old is just a, you know, 39 year old is just a 40 year old man child that honestly, they, that believes he matters to the people on his page. And yes, I found this pathetic knowing this person was, you know, five years my senior and yet has the brain of a soft, hollow shell at this point, living in some sort of fantasy world entirely built on false information, celebrity worship, and just ignorance. Uh, his confidence level was through the roof and not in a good way or a positive way, but in a very undeserving way. This undeserving sense of self-importance important uh, importance and exaggerated intellect. Now, nothing annoys me more than Daffy Duck Syndrome where you have an idiot that thinks they're intelligent. Uh but nothing else has changed other than his personality. He was no more intelligent than the average reality star that you'd see on fucking oxygen or something. And the internet has given people this false sense of security and worst of all, this insinuation that you have a quote unquote safe space. Remember, the world is chaos. There is no point to anything, and we live mm -hmm. on a placid island of ignorance, like H.P. Lovecraft said. And we are here to explore life itself, not explore the fake two-dimensional settings that were built by man, and life does not end with the closing of a fucking laptop. I miss the days of man, not machine. I miss being able to have a real conversation with someone that doesn't involve fads, memes, whatever the dance of the month is. The person I was referring to also happens to share uh, this idiotic uh, addiction with uh, a friend of his. And uh, this person suffers from a completely idiotic, unbelievable diagnosis that I couldn't believe was real called social media anxiety disorder. Now, I have major depressive disorder and ang mass anxiety. So to me, this is almost insulting. Like as if it wasn't already getting dumber out there. Now I'm supposed to feel sorry for an idiot that can't put their phone down. How is breaking the person's phone, shattering their laptop, and then giving them a solid ass whooping, how is that not a cure for this? All right, because everyone thinks they're fucking special and deserve things. So let me just really break this down for any idiot to understand. You deserve nothing. The world owes you nothing okay and the fact that people have this just idiotic sense of self-importance that makes them think that they are worth something 
And everyone has something to bring to the table. Everyone has some sort of quality that they can, you know, give out to the world. You know, everyone has their strengths and everyone has their weaknesses. The issue that I have is that these people are no longer examining their weaknesses. Instead, they just focus on what's good about them. So they feel like they don't have to change anything else. Nothing in this world is perfect. No one, no thing is perfect. Everything and everyone is always open for improvement. And as a human being on this placid island of ignorance, I really got struck by a certain saying that said, you know the most when you know that you don't know anything at all. And that was one of my favorite quotes because it was uh, on the, the board of my science class every day and I would just stare at it. And the reason why it meant so much to me was that it was saying it's okay to be ignorant as long as you do something about it. Because remember, ignorance is simply the lack of knowledge. Doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you did not know something. I'm ignorant to a pl to a, a plethora of things, but you know if it's at all important or honestly just for self improvement, I'm gonna work on that. If I'm ignorant to something, I want to know about it. I like to be miles long, you know, miles wide, but at least two inches deep, you know. And, you know, I look at certain people that claim to have that same thing, but it's really more like a dead pond, like a shallow puddle. And it's not vast. It's a very small little area of knowledge. And when you start out with that puddle, you should be turning it into an ocean. You know, knowledge is in my opinion, probably the best power in the world. It's better to know than to have. Because when you know, you know. You can see things coming a mile away. And you also have the humility to understand what you don't know yet. Okay? That's my point. That's really... Uh, what I wanted to get to because that has been bothering me for a while. Um, and being on streaming, I get strange questions or deal with certain, you know, I deal with certain topics on purpose because I need to address something that is very important with me. So uh, that was definitely needed to be said. So hopefully I can go ahead and we'll be posting this up on YouTube so everyone can check it out. And uh, that is my time. So thanks a lot for uh, spending it with me. Um, remember to use the hashtag right here for free Ben's doink. This is an anti Ben Shapiro hashtag. Um, ben Shapiro is not only just a disgusting human being, but um, he is probably the most sexually repressed man I've ever seen in my life. And somebody needs to let that thing breathe because this guy, I think the reason why he's so hateful and stupid, because I mean, he's not ignorant. He knows, but he refuses to accept. So that's the difference between ignorance and stupidity. You know, sometimes it's just a matter of semantics. All right. So now that we've gone full circle and back to the, pro the topic of semantics, I can now leave with this being a beginning, middle, and end. All right. Nothing like a good callback to send off. So that is my time. Thank you so much for spending it with me. Um, we will be back tomorrow at regular schedule. Um, take care of each other. Uh, love one another, and don't forget, as always, I will see you on the other side. So, 
Stay cheesy, my friends, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Remember, we're on every platform there is, so please try to get this uh, podcast out there because we work pretty damn hard on it. All right, so love you guys. Stay cheesy, my friends. Say, Pepper, do you want to lay down with me? Say, Pepper, do you want to lay down by my side? Pepper, do you want to lay down with me? Say, Pepper, do you want to lay down with me? Say, Pepper, do you want to lay down with me? Say, Pepper, do you want to lay down by my side? P